question for you that I hope some people will answer in the comments below. Uh, have you seen the new Ghostbuster movie? I know it's been out for a while now, but um, just wanted to know if anybody's seen it. I haven't, as of the recording of this, I haven't seen it. I uh, just wanted to know if it was worth it. I remember going to see the movie, the Ghostbusters 2, in theaters back in like 1990 or something like that. Uh, and it was terrible. So um, I just like to know what you thought about it. So anyway, but we got some cybersecurity to learn about. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to another episode of Cybersecurity 101. I'm Mark Hemingway, Creative Content Director here at Archer Energy Solutions. Today, we're gonna learn about hashing. It's a word that's popped up in many of the different shows that we've recorded here on Cybersecurity 101. So I thought, let's dive a little deeper and learn a little bit more about it, about what it is and all the things and all the happenings. So uh, let's just get started with what is hashing? Hashing is the process of converting input data, such as text or files, into a fixed size string of characters, typically for the purpose of ensuring data integrity or securely storing passwords. That kind of sounds a lot like encryption to me, because you're, you're converting input into, anyway. Um, <clears throat> so I have here, can you explain the difference between encryption and hashing? Because I feel like it's, is it the same thing? Is it pretty similar? Encryption transforms data into a, a different format using a key, allowing it to be decrypted back to its original form. Hashing converts data into fixed size string of characters, typically for data integrity verification or securely strong passwords but it's not reversible like encryption. Okay, so I'm a little confused as to why we're converting data into this fixed size string of characters. So let's see, how does hashing work? Let's try and see if we can figure out a little more as to why we would, why do we need to put, maybe that's the next question I have to ask after this. Let's see, hashing works by taking an input, such as a piece of text or file, okay, and running it through a hash function, which processes the input to generate a fixed size string of characters. Why? Known as the hash value or hash code, this hash value is unique to the input data, and even a small change in the input will result in a significantly different hash value. Hash functions are designed to be fast to compute and deterministic, meaning the same input will always produce the same hash value. All right, I'm still a little confused by this. I'm trying to understand why is it taking all this information and putting it into this, uh, as they say, fixed sized string of characters. I'm, I don't understand if it's not encrypting it, what is it doing? So I have here, I'm hoping this will help me. Why does it process the input to generate a fixed size string of characters? We are experiencing technical difficulties at this time. Uh, please enjoy some music. All right, and we're back. Fixed size output ensures that the hash value has a constant length. Regardless of the size of the input data, the consistency is important for practical use, such as comparing hash values or storing them efficiently in data. So is it just, is it making them smaller? Is it like, it also facilitates indexing and searching options as hash values can be stored in fixed size data structures like hash tables. So is it just, what's that called where you, um, so is, is hashing just another version of like zipping a file, like compressing it and making it smaller so you can send more information? So if it's like that, then my question is, is hashing like compressing a file? It doesn't reduce the size of the data, rather it condenses it into a unique representation. The purpose of hashing includes data integrity verification. All right, so it's putting it all together, keeping it, keeping it, okay, secure password storage and efficient data retrieval and cryptographic applications. Okay, so basically it's a way to keep information intact. 
I think I have it now. This has been a, this has been a struggle on this particular episode for me. So it's a way of making sure that things stay intact and that nothing can be altered or changed. I think I have it. If I don't have it, please let me know in the comments below because I feel like that seems like that's what it is. It took me a minute to get there and it was a little confusing for me today, but I think that's what it is. I feel like should I ask some more questions or should I just stop here? Okay, well, being as that this one was a little confusing for me today, uh, I think we'll just we'll just wrap this up um, and just ask the question I like to ask at the end of every episode, which is, what is a real life hashing incident? All right, one real life incident involved the breach of LinkedIn in 2012. I was unaware of that where hackers stole over 6.5 million hashed passwords. However, due to LinkedIn's inadequate security measures at the time, the passwords were not properly hashed and were vulnerable to cracking. Okay. So not only does it keep them, not only does it keep the passwords intact, it also keeps them secure. Okay. All right. Okay, please, please put more information, explain it to me, in layman's terms as best as possible but i think i i think i have it so anyway all right well thanks for joining me again for another episode of uh cybersecurity 101 um don't forget to follow us on all of our social media networks uh linkedin twitter and facebook um and also don't forget uh, on our YouTube channel at Archer U. Don't forget to go there, uh, like and subscribe. I'll see you next week. Have a good one. Bye. You can catch new episodes every Thursday. Follow us on YouTube at Archer U. Like, subscribe, and click the bell notification to be notified when a new episode has been released. Is there a question or a topic you'd like Mark to address on an upcoming episode of Cybersecurity 101? Leave them in the comments below and check back in every Thursday for a brand new episode.